Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. I'm going to go through a video. In this video, we're going to go through how to check pop off pressure on a Makuni SPN carburetor. Also, how to properly set up a carb linkage for a twin or a triple. Um, it seems straightforward, but if not done properly, um, you end up destroying the butterflies inside the carb really, really quickly. Um, so I'm going to go through the steps on how we end up cutting off um, the shafts, setting up the linkages. We've got some really sweet parts for this build um, for this customer. So it's a triple set of Makuni SBN 44s, um, a beautiful billet DASA intake manifold for a Cowie. 1100 um, we're going with jetworks couplers um, these couplers really are awesome there's no play in them um, so they work great um, we're now a distributor for this company pitch these guys do phenomenal carbon fiber work um, make a whole bunch of other billet goodies stuff like that um, I'm going to be doing some other videos showing their products and stuff, but uh, this is their carbon fiber jet plate. Um, these things are killer. Um, the different, so these are shaft couplers. We're going to use these on the end that we take the throttle drum off. PJS billet throttle wheel and the cable adapters so the first thing I'll do real quick so I can go through it for how to set the pop off um, this carb uses um, a 2.5 uh, needle and seat with an 80 gram spring so she, you should end up around 14 psi pop off I'm going to end up changing that for this motor but for this video I'm just showing you how to check pop off um, these will be opened up and changed at a later date um, so to check pop off you can check it um, by removing the front cover or you can leave it closed me personally I like removing the front cover because you can actually see it pop um, so we'll do that uh, once again this is these although they look like Phillips head if you look there's a little dot that little dot make it makes it not Phillips head. It's actually JIS. Um, so you want to get the proper screwdriver for it, so you don't end up stripping all the screws in the carburetor. So we'll go through. The other thing, if your carb's old, I recommend using an impact screwdriver. Um, these things are your friend. Um, so what you end up doing, the best way to use it, make sure you have the right bit, set it on, use a hammer, tap it first, then set the impact screwdriver, make sure it's in the right direction, and then you take a hammer, you hit it, it loosens the screw up, and then back it off by hand. Um, by doing it that way, you're not going to strip any screws. Um, other thing, when you're opening up carbs, the jets in these things are really tiny, so you want to make sure you have a clear workspace. Uh, whenever I work on carbs, I actually get a cardboard box, cut it up, set it down so there's no metal chips from me machining an engine or anything like that. All right, so these are new carbs. They haven't had fuel in them. So I open them up, and I will just put a little drop of two stroke oil in the needle and see just so it's lubricated so you get an accurate reading move it back and forth a little you can do it with fuel it just makes a mess and smells so to do to check the pop off you're going to need a couple things you're going to need a pop off gauge um, you're also going to need a cap for the return line 
um, and a couple wire ties. So what I do, I'll put the cap on. The cap goes on the return, which is the other one. The pop-off gauge goes on the lower. To make sure that it's not leaking, I always put a wire tie on each. pump it up 10 12 14 exactly so this is reading exactly what this needle and seat are set for um, we're going to end up with a higher pop-off pressure when these are all jetted properly but one of the main things you're checking with this is one if you're where you need it to be the other thing is making sure the needle and seat isn't leaking on you, um, which is really, for the most part, what most people use it for. Um, you know, if your needle and seat's leaking, you're going to have all types of tuning issues. Um, so pop-off testers are great for that type of check. So that is checked. Pop everything off. Sign. Let's put the new front covers on. Man, they look sweet as hell. All right, let's do the other two. So now when we start setting up the linkage, we have the one main car, which is where the throttle cable is going to connect to. And then we have the other dummy carbs that just have the linkage to it. Um, the big thing is the way these linkages are set up, um, or the carbs I should say are set up, is there's an E-clip on the one side which holds the throttle shaft in location. And then on the other side there's this spacer with a spring, um, the throttle wheel, and the nut. So now, because we only need the cable to go to one carb, when you remove this, we need to put something back in place, or what will end up happening is, from the vibration, the butterfly will go back and forth, and it'll end up destroying the butterfly, and then you'll end up having tuning issues, because you basically need to close the carb to have it to idle properly. And by having the carb completely closed because it's breathing through the corners where the butterflies were worn out, 
the low speed circuit won't work anymore. So setting up carbs properly the first time really makes for a good running setup. And if you set up your linkages correctly and shim and space everything correctly, they last forever. Um, you know, I got carbs that I built 15 years ago, carb racks that are still like brand new. So now those use 12 millimeter. So we're going to make this the front carb. So we have to take Good Lord. Clumsy tonight. Spring off. Back the idle screw off because that's not needed anymore. Second one. This idle screw out. And then on the last one, all we have to do is take the nut off and we'll thread on the new throttle wheel. So there's a couple different design throttle wheels from Makuni Carbs. Some of them thread on, some of them slip on like the OEM where it's keyed. So this PJS one is keyed, so it just slides on over. Like the stock one, we end up putting the washer back on, put the nut back on, tighten that up. That card is done. So now I'm going to go to set this up. On the Cowie triples, what ends up happening is let's bring this up so you can look. The shafts end up being too long, if you notice. So we end up having to cut the dummy carb shafts off. So we'll end up basically cutting this off at the flat. Now there are certain engines that you don't have to do that. If you don't have to, don't, because then if you ever want to take the setup apart, you can use it back as a single carb. On these, we have to cut them off. So we're going to cut off right where the flat is. Now, remember these are carburetors. You know, uh, you can either use a hacksaw. Um, I use a cutoff wheel. Um, but you know, it's a new carb. You don't want to get stuff in it. So what I end up doing is I tape the openings to make sure nothing gets in them. So that way you don't end up with, uh, metal shavings getting in your fresh carburetors, close the fuel line and the return as well. So, and also the pulse. So 
So we'll go ahead and do the same to the other carb. So for taping stuff, I've actually been using the exterior blue scotch painters tape. It's kind of like plasticky, um, if that's a word. But uh, it works really, really well for taping off engine parts um, because it actually stretches a little instead of like the normal painters tapes, which are more like papery. Um, so, all right. I'm going to shut the camera off for a second, cut these because it's going to be loud as hell on the grinder, and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, so we got the ends of the shafts all cut off, it deburred them um, on the other end because this is a fresh carburetor um, from Makuni. They're painted so you got to remove the paint off this end. Um, that's all done, so now what we're going to do, the two dummy carburetors, we're going to put a little grease on the seal area so just a dab will do you we'll take the Delrin bushings slide them in then we'll take the coupler so this is going to slide all the way on And push up against that piece of Delrin, which that's going to act as the retainer for the butterfly. So, remember the position you put these in. You want to put them so it's easy to get at. So, we're just going to slightly tighten the top one for the moment. We're going to check that the carb spins freely. And actually, if you notice, it's hitting here. So, we're going to have to rotate that so it's out of the regular motion which now it is let's move that a little bit so we can get to it that's the regular that's full throttle there we go so now that that's there we'll tighten that up do the same thing on this side, slide it on, open it up to full throttle, back it off a smidge, and we'll tighten up that top screw. Close it. Perfect. So now we'll slide. Of course, it would help if I had the screws loose. Slide that one on. There we go. Perfect. Now we will do the same on this side. Perfect. Now we'll take them, set them on the intake. Now that they're on the intake, we will flip them over. We're going to start off by just putting all this stuff on. Hand tight so we can check that everything is aligned. Um, if the carbs aren't aligned in a row, there's going to be a bind in the linkage. Um, luckily with this type of linkage, it's so solid 
that um, it's a lot less likely for that to happen because the linkage almost aligns everything for you. Um, but you still have to check it um, and get everything set in place. So, but taking the little bit of time and, and setting it up properly, you know, you'll end up with years of trouble-free service. Um, there's no reason these butterflies will wear out. Um, you know, it would be a few hundred hours before um, you end up having issues, if not more than that. Um, I know guys that I set up their carbs, you know, 15 years ago that are running the same linkage, same everything, never messed with it. Um, the carbs have been rebuilt a couple times over the years, um, just really to freshen them up. Um, but not that there was any real issue with anything. Um, so like anything, any rubber seal over time, um, especially with the new ethanol fuels, get eaten. Um, now what I try to do... Um, there's play in all these, so I try to locate the carb um, as centered as I can. And then after I'm done with that, I will check that they're all straight. Um, I'll check how the the actual throttle shaft feels. Um, if they're crooked, um, you'll normally feel it that the throttle shaft is kind of like almost sticky. Like it doesn't return nice and smoothly. Um and that's important so now you know the dummy carbs that have these mounted on the side which is holding this seal and aligning the butterfly you now have to push the other side into it to tighten everything up and then we're going to tighten those set screws so we'll back the idle screw all the way off it's important so then you can shut all the butterflies like go through check and just lightly push down on them make sure everything's shut and then we'll tighten the one set screw on the other side now we can check that everything's moving freely nice quick reaction there's no stickiness anywhere you know all the way up and down it's nice and smooth it's like butter so now what we'll do we'll tighten all the hardware up nice and tight and then after we tighten it we'll check it again to make sure while we were tightening it nothing moved on us and as long as nothing moved then we'll set the other set screws on it and we'll be good to go and then we can bolt these carbs on the ski that this is going on which is going on a trinity vector with a cali 1100 the thing's a little rocket ship um and putting these carbs on it are going to make it that much better all right so now that is all attached i'm going to check see if you notice actually it's a lit if you hear it, it's a little sticky. So we're going to loosen it up because something's binding. Let's see if we can see where it is. So it actually looks like it's this carb on the end. So what, we, what I do is I'll loosen the carb up. I'll check. It instantly goes away. So considering it instantly went away, we know that's the carb that was giving us issues. So we'll check if we can see why it is funny. That way a little bit. Tighten it down. Beautiful. Get that a little bit more. You always want to go through checks along the way 
so that way you know you know when I first did it there was an issue or when the problem happened and then you can work your way back to where what's causing your problem so now we're going to go back through go ahead, tighten up the lower set screws on all these Double check the uppers again. Give me a little more. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm not going to actually put the linkage on for the customer because I don't think he knows how he's going to set it up yet. Um, whether it's going to be set like this, which this is the one linkage that comes with the DASA intake manifold, or if it's going to be set up pulling off of here. Um, it really depends on what works in your hull. There isn't really a right or wrong answer. Um, they both work and work phenomenally. Um, Put a couple sets, put a couple screws in this. So this thing's like a work of art. Um, I always joke around that that billet is like man jewelry. You know, women like diamonds, men like billet. Um, even my wedding band, uh, I, I machined my wedding band out of titanium because I, I wanted to be able to say I did it. Um, and then I have a nice, you know, gold wedding band for when we go out um, and stuff like that. So look at that. That looks like a million dollars. So I hope you guys like the video. Um, please like the video. Subscribe. Um, check us out on Facebook. If you like to pitch parts, message us. I now have them in stock. Um, thanks for checking out the video. Look to talking to you guys again soon. Have a good night.